Okay, so this is a grade 11 question from November 2018. It's a question basically based on intermolecular forces. And this question has a lot of similarities to the organic chemistry questions in grade 12 um, that you do in grade 12 referring to intermolecular forces. So it says to you the reaction below is used in the Haber process to produce ammonia. So nitrogen plus hydrogen goes to ammonia gas. The boiling points of the substances in the reaction are as follows hydrogen nitrogen ammonia and he has the boiling point now the first thing i want you to think about when you do this okay think about your number line because these are negative numbers so if you actually have a look i'm not making this to scale but ammonia is minus 33 nitrogen is minus 195 and if we want to have a look here we can see, whoops, there went my line. We can see that in actual fact, if here is zero, then the hydrogen is way back over here on my number line, because this is minus 252, this is minus 195, and this is minus 33. Okay, so when we actually have a look here, this is a low boiling point, and this is a high boiling point comparatively because even though this is the big number, it's a big negative number. So sometimes confusion in these questions arises when you've got negative and positive numbers and you have to think about them. So for now, I've drawn you the number line to help you think about it. So now it says to you refer to the intermolecular forces and explain the differences in boiling point between ammonia and nitrogen. So whenever we want to look at intermolecular forces, let's look at the molecules first. So nitrogen, if we have a look at it, what is the mass of nitrogen? It's 14 plus 14, can you see here on the periodic table, which is 28. Okay, so if we looked at the relative molecular mass of nitrogen, we'd get 28. If we looked at the relative molecular mass of ammonia, we've got 14 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 17. So now, according to intermolecular force theory, the larger your mass, the um, lower your, your melting point, okay, or the higher your boiling, sorry, I'm talking nonsense, the greater your mass, the higher your boiling point, because the intermolecular forces are stronger. But if you have a look here, nitrogen is actually heavier than ammonia, okay, so if nitrogen is heavier than ammonia, you would expect it to have um, nitrogen to have the higher boiling point, but it doesn't. So something else is at play here. And the thing that's at play here is hydrogen bonding. But if you don't remember that ammonia has hydrogen bonding, let me quickly explain to you why ammonia has hydrogen bonding. To figure out if you've got hydrogen bonding, you need to first figure out if you've got a dipole, okay? So what is the difference, the delta electronegativity in nitrogen? If you look on your periodic table, nitrogen is 3. So 3 minus 3, because I've got two nitrogen atoms, is 0. There is actually no electronegativity difference in the nitrogen-nitrogen bond. But if you look at the delta electronegativity in the nitrogen-hydrogen bond, it's going to be 3, remember I've got the electronegativity here on the periodic table, minus 2,1, which is 0, 0,9. So that makes this bond polar, okay? It is a polar bond. Remember now as well, nitrogen makes this interesting shape with the hydrogen. I've actually drawn this the wrong way around. This is not the way you normally see it in pictures. Let me draw it the way you normally see it in pictures. You have the nitrogen and then there are three hydrogens down here. Okay, and then there's a lone pair on top of the, the nitrogen atom. So if all of these bonds are polar and the nitrogen is grabbing the electrons, you can see that the electrons are going to be sucked up towards the nitrogen in this direction, which makes the nitrogen slightly negative and all of these slightly positive. Okay, clumsy pen, so it's hard to draw in the delta. So now if we have a dipole and the dipole is involved with the hydrogen, 
okay, we call this hydrogen bonding. So remember dipole, we have two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. So here is the hydrogen bonding in ammonia. So when we refer to the intermolecular forces, we have to describe the intermolecular forces. So in 3.1, you have to be sure to say nitrogen has, now what kind of intermolecular force has it got? It's got the weakest kind of force, which we sometimes call London, and sometimes we call induced dipole. Okay, sometimes it's also called van der Waal. But London or induced dipole forces are very weak forces. But first we must describe what kind of bonding it's got. So nitrogen has got London induced dipole intermolecular forces. Please do not write IMF, write intermolecular force. But I've got no space here. Ammonia has hydrogen bonding. Okay, so the first thing that we do for our three marks is we name the type of force with each kind of molecule. So nitrogen has London forces, ammonia has hydrogen bonding. And then we say ammonia has stronger intermolecular forces. You've named the force and now you are saying which of these two forces is stronger. Ammonia has stronger intermolecular forces that need more energy to overcome. Okay. So F, because they need more energy to overcome, the boiling point is higher. So the boiling point of ammonia is higher than that of nitrogen because it has a stronger intermolecular force which requires more energy to overcome the forces and then to make it boil. Now it says write down the formula of the substance in the table that will have the lowest melting point. So fairly obviously if you've got the lowest boiling point, yes, because look here, remember this is low down this end here because it's a negative number. So hydrogen is going to have the lowest melting point because it's got the lowest boiling point. Then it says to you explain why hydrogen will evaporate faster than nitrogen. Refer to this type and strength of intermolecular forces. So if we look at hydrogen and nitrogen, we know that hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. We know that nitrogen is a diatomic molecule. Okay. But now why is hydrogen evaporating faster than nitrogen? So you have to again describe the types of forces. So hydrogen and nitrogen both have, they both have this induced dipole or London force. But remember that nitrogen is heavier than hydrogen or larger than hydrogen. So, but nitrogen is larger than hydrogen. So we can't explain it on the type of intermolecular force because they have the same type of intermolecular force but nitrogen is larger than hydrogen and so the force the intermolecular force is stronger okay and so nitrogen does not evaporate as easily remember this is vapor pressure evaporating also, you can say that um, vapor pressure is inversely proportional, inversely proportional to boiling point. So the one with the highest boiling point, I mean, the one with the highest boiling point will have the lowest vapor pressure and the one with the lowest boiling point will have the highest vapor pressure. So Hydrogen will evaporate faster than nitrogen because the intermolecular forces, although they're the same kind as nitrogen, they are weaker. So then it says to you here in 3.4, write down the formula of the substance in the table that will have the highest vapor pressure. So vapor pressure, evaporation, it's almost the same thing. The highest vapor pressure will have the lowest boiling point. It will be hydrogen again because hydrogen, um, if we want to explain the answer, we're going to say hydrogen's got the weakest intermolecular forces 
and it's got the lowest boiling point and the things with the lowest boiling point have the highest vapor pressure and this is where you could also write this vapor pressure is inversely proportional to boiling point.